The majority of the work that's on exhibit tonight is a gift. It's a gift from two very generous people, Patricia and Carmine de Vivi. But this is a major, major contribution to Mexicarte Museum. 300 and something mass that they donated, valued at several hundreds of thousands of dollars. We are 29 years old, and we've been trying to build a museum and put a museum together. But a museum is a building. What is the heart of the museum is the community and the precious artwork inside and the people who love and appreciate it and the story that it tells. And this now serves as a major anchor for our future. And this is going to help propel our project towards, the, towards building a beautiful building. And you, uh, Patricia and Carmine, are going to make that happen, are helping us going to make that happen. Thank you so much. With any major collector, how did you begin acquiring these pieces and why Mexican masks? Why Mexican dance masks? Why ceremonial masks? The human face has always been something that has interested me. So the first time we went to Mexico, Pat and I, we went to Lagunilla in Mexico City and I saw these three masks on the ground and I thought, I've got to own those. I, I, they're just something really special. So I, I bought those three and as a result of buying those three, I ended up having a collection of masks that every time I turned around, I'd, I'd find another mask. And every time I'd go to Mexico, I'd buy another piece or two or three or four or five. It got to the point where, you know, they all start to own you rather than you own them. And I think we've all experienced that. The thing that, that I do want to point out is the fact that masks that are reproductions of the human form, the minute you put a mask on, you become something else. You act like something else. You, you interpret the situation differently. That's probably one of the most important things to know about masks. A, a mask is an interpretation of your soul and the way you think and the way you perform and the, the way you respond. What region and what specific dance really caught your attention and that you started collecting more of? Is there a specific interpretation or holiday mass that you gravitate towards? Uh, you, you know, that's an interesting question simply because uh, every trip that I made to Mexico and I would go down often, the easiest thing that I would experience every time I went was to find out where a dance was being performed. I would try to search them out so that I could, could watch the dances, understand what they were doing. The only dance that I saw where they didn't just shuffle all night was the dance of the vaqueros on the wall over there. And those are all formed leather. The appendages are all wooden. But I happened to be in this village in Guerrero where I saw this dance being performed and, and the, all the riders came out on horseback. It's called La Danza de Vaqueros. And they all came out in black shrouds with just these heads, these heads with the ribbons flying. And it was like, you know, the most dramatic thing that you'd ever want to see. After the dance was over, I bought that whole collection, the ones right directly from where I am. I, I bought the whole collection from a young man. Of course, I would encourage a purchase. I always, I always did that because I, I knew I wanted, there was no way in hell that I could get a mass collection together if I didn't become aggressive and I asked him if I could buy that collection and he said that I could because they were not going to dance it any longer and so I bought the whole thing and I paid probably not even two hundred dollars for the for the twelve pieces they're priceless today because the dance has never been done since I saw it that I know of, the quality of the masks are just absolutely spectacular. 
because they're formed leather. The highlights, the feeling of the, the flesh in the pieces, they emphasize not only the scorpion, which is often emphasized in Mexican mask making, uh, but they also emphasize it was always Jesus Cristo, the, the Christ image. You always found that some, at some point you would find that in the dance and it would have something to do with, with Jesus Christ. And, and I always found that to be really wonderful and very warming as well. Well, a lot of the masks that you see in the exhibition, there are contemporary versions of that practice and they're available on our YouTube channel. If you go to Official Mexicarte, you can see a lot of the dances practiced in contemporary versions. They're not gonna be in as ornate wood masks and things like that. It's gonna be more handmade and plastics, but it's very similar or altered versions of these ancient dances and a lot of them are affiliated with Catholic practices and dogmas and ideologies because a lot of the dramas were used during as conversion practices for the indigenous groups. So each of the masks definitely have a specific agenda and not necessarily specifically, oh, we need you to be Christian, but a lot of the indigenous groups reformed those ideas. Sometimes they rewrote history. A lot of these masks aren't necessarily static objects. They're not dead. They're still alive and they're still practiced and still exemplifies the beauty of what is Mexico and the reforming of a history that's not necessarily about being colonized, but about retaking and reclaiming an identity and making it your own. And so with that, I wanted to thank Mr. DeVivi for giving us the insider information and I want you to also please enjoy the exhibition. And if you'd like to see those contemporary dances, the, each of the labels that have contemporary versions have QR codes, so you just scan them with your cell phone, you can see a playlist of that that we've created. So if you have any other questions, I will be available and Mr. Davivi will also be here too and thank you, thank you for coming.